And good evening, everybody. This is Michael Filigera. I am with LogicalSignals.com and also TradersHelpingTraders.com. And this is the Elliott Wave update for the NASDAQ 100 for Sunday, September 26, 2021. Picking up where we left off on Thursday evening, uh, the NASDAQ did follow through to the downside, putting in a small fourth wave correction, and then proceeded to uh, start to move higher again. And that was in line with where we left off on Thursday and that I was looking for an additional high above Friday's, excuse me, Thursday's highs at 15,345. Um, they got close, but has not occurred yet. And now as Globex gets going on uh, Sunday, the market basically tried to open higher and didn't quite succeed. Uh, got up to uh, 15,330 and then had started to decline. Uh, remains a little bit lower as the other markets uh, continue to rally a little bit. So, but I still feel that the NASDAQ has high probabilities of putting in an additional rally uh, to complete the larger B wave. Remember, this is still a corrective phase. And from the highs that we had at one, one 15,708, we have the intermediate A wave, and now we're in the process of putting the finishing touches on an intermediate B wave. Now, within that B wave, we have a rally, a decline, and an additional rally. That additional rally is the C wave. And within that C wave, because under Elliott, the guidelines are very clear that all C waves, regardless of position, so whether it's in the bull market, the bear market, no matter where it falls, all C waves will be five wave structures. So they will be impulsive. And because this is a counter trend move, the finishing move of, of this C wave would then lead to a larger C wave down counter trend, which is down. So the B wave itself is counter trend because it is going up. So this C wave is going up and the following C wave that's gonna follow it will begin to be destructive and also be its own five wave structure. But within this C wave, I am looking for a little bit more. So let's start to build some extensions and then a retracement to kind of put some parameters around where we think that first of all, where the B wave can come in. So I will put that one up there first by putting on some Fibonacci retracements. There we go, that's what I want. And I'm gonna cut down to here. All right, good enough. And so now we have the next one up on the list. We actually have the 618 level, which is at 15,368. That definitely would get us above 47. So it fits. So our resistant zone right now sits between 15,369, we'll call it, and 15,448 to 450. So that's our zone that we just get off of the retracements. And the B wave, very common, can come up into that level. Now let's put some additional parameters around as we're getting to the conclusion of that B wave. And we can put extensions into place by first going there to the top of wave A to the bottom of wave B. And so we get some, first we have a double right here at the 15,368 area, which is 0.618 on the retracement back up of B. And then also for the C wave, where it is 1.236 times the length of wave A. And since we've already exceeded the 100% level, which is the most common, the next most common is the 1.618. But anything in between also can kill it, also can hold it back, complete it, use the wrong word, kill it, can complete it. Um, so, but our zone is now picking up a little bit of congestion right in here. So we have 15,368. So we actually have 64 to 68. Then we have 15,421. 
to 447.48, which we were calling before. So that still is pretty strong because now we have two in a, in a tighter zone. But we, now we've got the larger zone and we've tightened it up just a little bit. A break drives us up into this area right in here. Also, for the NASDAQ would not be out of line that it just exceeds and just keeps on going as whatever happens, it continues to happen. So this buying um, could just actually push it up on through uh, because we know that the market is a little bit thinner in terms of bids and offer. And if we get larger buyers coming in, they just go to where they can get their orders filled. So the market will rally or decline to the orders. So the buyers are looking for the sellers. The sellers are gonna be looking for the buyers. And if they can't find them until up into certain levels, um, well, that's where they're gonna go. So this would be the zone. Now I have one more that I can put on there and that would be what expectations for wave five. So wave five of C and that we take from the bottom of wave two of C. And then we're gonna take it up to the top of wave three. Now we're going to take it back down to the bottom of wave four. That's what we just pulled. So, and believe it or not, we build up more congestion right there. Wave five would be equal in length to wave three, right in between there. At about 15,000, we're going to say 22. So we got 20, 22, or actually it's going to be right there on it. 426. So we have 21, 26, and then 47. But look at we get a double up right there where the whole C wave would be equal to 1.382 of the A wave, but the wave five would be equal in length to the wave three, and that all comes in right there. So it's a pretty good zone. The next most logical place would be right here, but we got 618, 1.236, and 786. So all, first is all wrapped around that 66 to, or 63 to 72 level. And then we have 20 to 20, 20, 24 to 47. But more likely, it's going to find a lot right in there because of the size of the, of the numbers. So once that's complete, then again, I'm going to be looking for the start of a larger, right? Inter intermediate wave A, intermediate wave B, intermediate wave C decline. So it's gonna be a larger C wave. It's gonna be a sharper decline. It's gonna resemble parts of this A wave. More than likely that. Enough out there to, to, to reverse the course and bring in handfuls of, of sellers. And again, we'll go through a, a point of recognition. Because remember, just C waves under Elliott are always five wave structures. They're impulse. So it's going to be impulsing to the downside. And out of one, three, and five, one of them is going to extend. But the third is normally the longest and the strongest because it's normally containing that point of recognition which comes within wave three. So it's, and you've heard me speak of it, it's a three of three move. That's where it's sort of like, you know, the, the tornado just kind of really forms and touches down and creates all of this destruction right in the three of three, point of recognition. Okay, change our position. So in other words, it's almost as if that area is where the line in the sand is being drawn by a lot of portfolio, by a lot of option traders, et cetera, et cetera, that when that line breaks, they'll flip positions. Point of recognition of several different things, but lots of things can happen in there. And that's why, because we're reaching levels that change people's minds. Traders need to react. Um, but I'd be looking for an initial five waves down on uh, or even a lower, uh, time frames at 30 or 15 minutes, but as long as I can count to five and it's followed by three and then they start down again, then we're in pretty good shape because again, 
I'm looking for confirmation that it's a heat wave by forming the first wave and then a wave two and then begin that third. That's going to be our, our confirmation that we're into that five down. So we'll track it along the way. Now I'm going to retreat or retreat. I'm going to take all of these upside scenarios off. And since we are talking about the potential of the C wave, what did I say before? 73. I'm going to put in the uh, Fibonacci extensions for the suspected C wave that's coming, or the anticipated C wave that's coming. So that is the high, come down to the lower wave A. Now I'm just going to throw up a little bit of where are we coming in? It's four, 44. 19, see there, it was right there. Come on, thank you. I'm going to go to uh, 424, 25. I think that was right in the middle of uh, going up to either 14,047 or you know, starting at 21, I think it was. So we'll put it right there as an estimate. The most common Fibonacci relationship between the C wave and an A wave is that they are equal in length. That's going to come in at 14,523. One of the things that is not necessarily a requirement, but it is an expectation that wave C will take out below, in this case, of wave A. And so that happens anywhere below 14,807. So once we start hitting below that, then we, if we can count five, we could be you know, reaching our lows. But the next most common is that wave C will equal 1.618 of wave A. And that brings us down to 13,966. So we would break below 14,000. And so we'll, we'll, we'll be tracking it on the way down and it hasn't even begun yet. So, but these are what I'm trying to demonstrate is like, once it does get going, it can really start to break and it can break quickly. So many times they're news driven, many times some, something happens to disappoint, but I go right there, that's what I'd be looking for again. And I'll tell you what's still hanging out there that caused that one. And that's the fact that they didn't make the payment yet to the dollar denominated bonds. They paid the one denominated bonds, but not this one that has not been reported yet. In fact, it's still hanging out there and now they're starting to wonder what's going on. So we got a lot to look forward to. Um, trading this is gonna be the same. What's gonna be important folks is that we start to learn to read the price action. We start to depend on the formation of the bars and what we can anticipate as follow-up to those bars. And you know, you can see them when you start getting mammoth buy orders. Uh, go that was the open on Friday. So initially we came out of the gate, ran it up, they threw out their cell, pushed it all the way back down. But the next bar, next bar told you um, when the bounce came, and this is again, we're on the five minute chart, but that when it came, came back up, touched down, boom, it rallied. Then the next bar was the kicker. The next bar was the kicker to catch that after it came down and came back up. That was the one. But you can, you'll read them easier because you're following it on a, even a lower time frame. Following it on a two minute. And let's go to Friday. I'm gonna open that up even more. Thank you. Okay, same, but this is on a two minute bar. So it was worth riding up, but when it broke and then it broke down below that level, it was worth riding down. So this is when you can't fall in love with you're not getting follow through because when you don't, you have to be able to change. 
you have to be able to reverse. And then when it comes back up, now this one just started there and then rallied. So that was a signal to go ahead and jump on board. We got it all the way up. They bring it back down, boom, they do it again. And that was a beautiful bar to catch. Here, you got your signal and it broke. But this is still opening. This is still, they're just throwing these orders out. So you have to remain <clears throat> pretty much on your toes. You don't want to let things go against you because they can go. On a trade like this, you know, if you thought, okay, we're getting more and you got in here, the theory is, is that you, you wouldn't let it go more than 50% of that bar. You just can't. Because here, let's say you got in at there. That's 241. Where's the bottom bar? 21. That's a 20 point drop. And you consider it a one like you're going to put two, $300. So the more you're carrying, the more you can get hurt. But, and then again, it didn't come all the way back up to that level before it sank again. So, Elliot wise, you finish the rally A, B, C. You have more interest here. Oh, could this have been a four? No, because it overlapped. So they brought it all the way down, tucked it down again, and then kicked butt. Then the buyers came back in. So it is possible to recognize this and you jump in. If you don't, you're going to sit and wait. And then you don't want to fall into the habit where, oh, I just have to get in, and then you're late. You, know, it does, you get some follow through, but this was, these are two minute bars. So that was rally up, rally down, rally up, fall down. That's how fast, and it's, it goes really quick. So either you get your, you get out, so where you, you're putting in an offer and it gets taken out, or you're gonna sell at the market, or you're gonna have something that you're gonna to have to get out when it starts to break back here, even though it does go up again. It's good habit not to let things go more than a bar. Because there's, who, you know, the, here's the next thing. You're waiting, you're still waiting. You, you need it to go above because that's what you're looking for. It's gonna give you hints, it's not gonna do it. Whether you take the hint, now you're sitting on it, and now you're getting killed. So being able to play day trading according to the bars, you can take it all the way down to the one minute bar. And that's even give you cleaner, cleaner looks into what's happening. You know, one minute bar made it very clean. Quick, quick, quick trades. Quick, quick. All playable but you must stay on your toes and you must stay very reticent of how far down does it come? Where did it touch moving average wise? What's going on with my 20? What's going on with my other moving averages that are telling me they're just sliding, but it's here. Did, did this react? Likely, but it flips back around. It doesn't necessarily give you a sell signal. And when something comes down and touches a 15, goes back up through it and then goes back up through the 20, it's a buy. Here it comes down and retests it and flies through it, and it's a huge buy. And basically, you then are checking on your other charts to see where your 20 sits, where your 8 sits, and what's it touching, what's it coming off of. And that helps to build your picture. I'm going to leave it there because enough of this trade talk. <laughs> because more importantly is, well, what can we expect for tomorrow? But this kind of helps you how do you want to play it as it's occurring? And where should we be expecting that strength? If this market is all the way up at the top of where we're, our expectations are for, for tomorrow's range, then you got to start looking for the sells. You have to start looking for sell signal. That would be initial. But until that time, until it really kind of gets to a level that you're expecting, you look for where the direction should be. But right now, even on our small time frame charts, you can see it's iffy. It's not telling you. That was a nice little bar, but it's not really giving you a ton. Again, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, and the next update will be tomorrow, the 27th.